Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, wrapping up my last day of vacation in Mendocino. Shell and I head out tomorrow morning and head back to the Bay Area. So uh, thank you everybody for sharing my vacation with me. I appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, little five to seven minute uh, water interludes that I post up midday. It was a beautiful day that uh, when I filmed those. Those were all filmed on uh, Christmas Eve. It was just, it was partly cloudy. There was no wind, uh, low 50s outside, uh, about eight degrees Celsius for the non-US metric fans out there. Um, just a beautiful time out there. And uh, shot those videos. My wife was impressed that I was holding the phone without a tripod when I was doing that. But you'll probably notice it bounces up and down every once in a while. Um, I want to do uh, just kind of a reading on Jack Smith. <laughs> the enigma that's Jack Smith. Because you won't get much info on him out in the news media source. So this is actually one of those times where Tara's kind of interesting because we kind of peek behind the curtain, you know, as to what's going on with him. Uh, he's been active in trying to press Judge Eileen Cannon in uh, moving the documents case along. He's been pressing the Supreme Court to skip the appellate court and was not successful on that with regards to presidents being kings and um, uh, you know, keeping the appellate court on their toes too in DC for their rulings on that. So uh, let's, I wanna just kinda of wanna get a feel after I've done my Merrick Garland AG uh, reading. Let's see what Jack Smith is feeling like these days. Entertainment purposes only, happy holidays. How is Jack Smith feeling about all his investigations and his role in those investigations? <laughs> He's a mystery wrapped in a question surrounded by an enigma, however the quote goes. He keeps, man, this guy keeps everything close to the vest, even tarot readings on what he's doing is kept close to the vest. In some ways, I think he kind of revels in that mystery. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that he knows it drives other people crazy. Can you imagine being married to him? <laughs> he, you know, what do you want for breakfast? And you get this long wistful stare and then you have to kind of figure out what the heck is this man thinking at all times maybe not maybe with his wife he's really open but um uh mystery crossed with the devil yeah okay so um <clears throat> what is he thinking well he knows he's got a difficult job to do he's he's you know literally battling Donald Trump, fascism, and traitors and insurrectionists to the country. And, you know, who knows how it's going to turn out. But I really do. These are the pillars of wisdom, by the way. I think that he revels in keeping things close to the vest and keeping people guessing. Because when you keep people guessing, they can't strategize against you. Not that Trump is a big strategy person, because he really isn't. He's pretty basic. But Jack Smith giving nothing away has got to drive Donald Trump nuts. Because if you think about it, Trump being a, a malignant narcissist and a pathological liar, he just makes stuff up. And when you make stuff up, you keep people on their heels because how do you fact check somebody? And he did that to Justin Trudeau with NAFTA. He just made up some number like, you guys are screwing us. You uh, you did this and it cost us you know, 3 million jobs or $30 million. And and Trudeau's like, that's not true. But And Trump was later breaking, yeah, I just made it up on the spot. And that's kind of it. it when you revel in chaos and you're a chaos agent like Trump is, and I've dated somebody like this, um, uh, she was a pathological liar and she reveled in chaos and, you know, she would just make stuff up. She lied all the time. And Trump does the same darn thing. And it keeps people on, on their heels because you can't keep up with the lies when he's making up the lies as he goes. These are tough cases that he's dealing with here. This is a big burden that he's been tasked with. But I think he's he's like the person that's up for that task. In the past, I uh, got the Hierophant 
no, this is um, Jack Smith's <clears throat> uh, working with The Hague and, you know, uh, working on the crimes, uh, you know, crimes against humanity and other crimes that he was working on in The Hague absolutely prepared him for this job. And his reputation, I believe, absolutely preceded him that despite the toughness of the job, he was the right man for it. Current situation, Page of Pentacles. He's been having to offer up little bits of information, little bits of his case, like to Judge Cannon, for instance. <clears throat> she just recently unsealed some documents uh, that he did not want unsealed because it could potentially uh, spell out his uh, prosecution strategy in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. But, you know, he, the judge is going to rule on that. There's not much he can do initially to stop her from doing that. So he has to be very careful about giving away as little information as possible. Now, I remind you, just to remind folks here, the Page of Pentacles is also my... Um, my grifting card and the stolen election card. So right now, I really think he's focused on the January 6th case. I realize he's pressuring Eileen Cannon on the Mar-a-Lago documents case, but he's kind of pressuring her to commit to that May court date because if she doesn't and she wants to kick it out to after the 2024 elections, it gives him more... Um, leverage to keep either the January 6th case going as soon as possible or talking with Tanya Chutkin about moving the Georgia case up. So he's got a lot of brands in the fire, as it were. Overarching energy with Jack Smith, team player, but notice it's also the three of coins. So he offers a little bit up front, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, a lot more discussions, a lot of strategy, and notice that the Three of Coins is dark. You don't get to hear about it. You don't hear the backroom deals or there are no leaks coming from uh, this man and his team. So he's very good at what he does, and he's very good at keeping a secret and keeping things a mystery. Lesson to be learned. Um, he'll give when he needs to, but he gives, I would say, as little as, uh, you know, again, he offers a little, he gives a little on this one. You know, if, if this was Judge Cannon and Judge Cannon says, I need something, he'll give her something, but, you know, he gives her... Um, he gives her the minimum that she needs to make a decision and he'll dress it up nicely so that it looks nicer than the than it is. Instead of getting the full coin, you get a, a flower and a, pot, and a pot and here you go. Um, th that's one thing. I think this is, again, a, a testament to all the stuff he has going on. You only see the peaks of the iceberg. You don't see what's underneath it. The other thing is he's not naive. Uh, this card could be a card of naivete. He is definitely not naive. I think he understands the scope of what he's dealing with. Um, and uh, also with um, with this is nostalgia. I, I don't think there's a nostalgia there as much as he's got a, a job to do and he's going to do it, basically. <laughs> Outcome, Ace of Swords. Yeah, um, it's a tough task. He's absolutely up for it. And he's going to pursue this to the ends of the earth. For the folks that, you know, um, and, I've, and I've got a few that uh, don't like Merrick Garland. Remember, Merrick Garland did bring this guy in. And he, you know, sometimes understanding the tools available to you in your tool chest may not be the tools that you need to get the job done. So then you bring somebody with that skill set in to get the job done. Jack Smith may not be a very good attorney general because he might be much better at being that prosecutor, being that investigator, that special counsel that goes in, digs in there, leads a team, and grinds through this stuff. Um, 
he may not like being one step up from there where he's telling other investigations where to go and giving them insight, but then he has to let them do the work. I think he kind of revels in the actual work. Who knows? Maybe he would be a good AG if that's where his uh, desires and ambitions want to take him. Yeah, we can ask, right? <laughs> Okay, let's see. So, uh, two main cases he worked out, January 6th and the uh, Mar-a-Lago documents case. Let's, um, let's look at the Mar-a-Lago documents case here. Uh, how, is, how, is, how is he viewing that going with his, uh, with his work with uh, Judge Cannon? How is he viewing the, the documents case? It's the Drunken Hill Billy Brawl card. Um, I think he's <laughs> he's stirring stuff up in that he is purposely stirring stuff up, and that makes sense, right? Because he's trying to get her to commit, and he's not let he's not playing cool or chill. He is absolutely he's poking the hornet's nest with his sticks. He wants to like make a commitment. Can we come on? Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're doing. And he's gonna force her to make decisions. He's not going to let her rest. This she's she does not get a moment's rest with him on this one. And that's because he's trying to get her to commit to either holding that May date or admitting that she really wants to kick this thing out to 2024. So he is gonna he's got the pressure on her. And he's gonna continue doing it. He knows what's coming. He's got three, you know, he's got a couple different court cases coming up here, you know, between the Mar-a-Lago documents case, January 6th, and then you've got the Georgia Rico case. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's working with Fonnie Willis a little bit with that one too. He is going to make darn sure that something happens. That no, You don't get to have all three of your cases kicked out to uh, the end of 2024 or into 2025. Underneath it all, it's the uh, you know, hopes, wishes, dreams fulfilled. He's going to make sure the American people have something to base their votes on. Uh, you know, again and again, he's fighting for justice. He's fighting for the American people on this one, and he's not going to let corruption get in the way of what he wants. And what's interesting is that you know, with the Mar-a-Lago documents case. He's saying, you know, there's federal speedy trial uh, uh, rules. And upon filing on this certain date, you've got like 70 days or whatever it is to get this thing going. So come on, let's go. Let's, what are we going to do? We know we've got this court case that you say we're going to be doing in May. You know, April showers bring May flowers. <laughs> and we're going to have that rainbow there. And everybody's dancing around in springtime. But we need to get, you know voter questionnaires out so that our um, jury questionnaires out because we need to get a bunch of people on the jury you know chop chop let's go in the past um you know he's had a lot of things going on and you know, he does his filings but now he's understanding it's go time between the potential delays with the uh, january 6th insurrection case and um the mar-a-lago documents case the time for slowly paddling and moving forward it's over because he can see where folks are trying to delay things for trump and he's not going to let that happen current situation two of cups he's got two different court cases he's got mar-a-lago and he's got january 6th and he's engaged both judges in those cases he's engaging the appellate courts he's engaging uh, the supreme court so he and the court system um are having lots of discussions. He is stirring up the pot with everything. Got a pair of twos here too. But with I know again with Judge Cannon, since it's supposed to be about Judge Cannon, you know, he's he's gone slowly, but you know, he he keeps pushing it. He's not gonna let her go to calmer shores. He's gonna keep things um, a little bit choppy. Now, there are agreements that you have to you have to come up with. You said we're going to do this on this such a date. Here, let me help you with that planning. There's your election interference case again. 
in that previous spread, I was saying, you know, he offers up as little as possible. He's he's doing some of her work for her by reminding her that, hey, if we're going to have this trial in May, you need to get this and this and this done. Here, let me help remind you that you need to get this stuff done. Let's get this documented down here because don't you think it's valuable that we have a speedy trial? <sighs> Lesson to be learned is the nightmare. Um the stress and the anxiety. Um, I think he is stressing out. Uh, he, again, you'll never see it, but you know, there's a lot of logistics that are going with this and maybe he has a self-imposed deadline of getting this stuff done before the 2024 election. And he knows he's meeting up with interference with judge Cannon. I suspect he, uh, he knew he was going to be meeting up with interference with her with the uh, January 6th case when they just indicted Trump and none of the co-conspirators and such, um, that one's probably causing him a little more stress here. But, you know, again, he's the kind of guy, he gets things done. Now, he's trying to do things quickly, but um, with the Temperance card, you have that integration, the detoxifying. He is trying to get, he's got, again, multiple court cases going on. He's got two court cases and then uh, Fonnie Willis has a third court case, and he's trying to get commitments. And this first one with um, with uh, Judge Cannon, what are you going to do? Are you going to honor what you said you're going to do, or are you going to you know kick this thing down the road? And <clears throat> he's trying to help her honor that made commitment. It's causing him a lot of stress. Will he get that made commitment? Well, I don't know. That's on Judge Cannon her morals, ethics, and everything else that goes along with that. But, um, yeah, he's, he is, that uh, temperance card also, I think that you can also look at that as um, he's giving her enough rope to hang herself. Think of it that way. She's, she's a very frustrating person because judges are supposed to be unbiased, and he gives her all sorts of opportunities to be unbiased. But everything that he does, you know, it's just a little more rope, a little more rope, a little more rope. And it gives her the opportunity to, to take an exit and say, you know what, I've done enough to help uh, the Federalist Society and Trump. Or if she's not willing to do that, it gives her enough rope to say, OK, you've made your choice and now you're going to bear the consequences of that. I don't think we're going to get five and five, May and May. Okay, what do we get? What do we get? What do we get? How is this, how is this going to come out with Judge Cannon? Um, I think she's going to she's going to try and delay it, say May's not doable. May is still one of those winter months. It's, it's too soon. We can't throw Trump out. I, I think she's going to delay it. Said, Trump needs more time. These poor Donald Trump and his his crappy team of lawyers, they need more time on that one. You know, I'm going to make the decision here, and I'm deciding that this needs to be done. Now, this is usually my DOJ card, but um, I think she's going to probably try and delay this. And it's up to the DOJ to decide what they're going to do next. It's a winner's takes all. She's doing this to help Trump. Nope, sorry, May's not doable. He's going to push to say May is doable. Let's get this done. But um, she's honestly, I think she's still really involved emotionally with Team Trump and protecting and protecting him. She's got a decision to make, though. You know, she he is pressing her to make that decision and to follow the law. And he's sitting right there underneath her. Are we going to make this date or not? I, I still think she's going to delay it. That's, I mean, I don't think that's a real reach here to say that she will delay that case. All indication is that she's looking to delay that case. 
And maybe that Five of Swords could be, well, okay, that whole thing underneath it, you announced that it's going to be delayed. Maybe that's when he takes her. Uh, I don't know if you can appeal that to an appellate court or not. I, sorry, <laughs> not a lawyer. <laughs> um, but, you know, that could be what that is. Okay, you've made your decision. Five of Swords time. Ace of Cups time. You know, you're, you're clearly too emotionally involved in this case that you cannot make a, a rash judicial decision. We'll see. I could be wrong on that one. It could be that that five of coins is she gives up. Sorry, Donald Trump, I can't help you anymore. I, I've got to do this. You know, basically he calls her bluff. But there's, you know, five of coins and the five of swords. Um, you know, it's a winner takes all thing. And... Uh, you know, people being tossed out or, or helped out or something along those lines. I, I think she's going to, uh, she's going to delay. All right. Uh, January 6th case. How's he feeling about how things are going with the January 6th case? Come on down. Disappointment. He's, um, and it's probably, you know, he, he probably put a lot of hope in getting that thing to the Supreme Court right away because he really wanted that and now we get the next five right here's the third five out of out of the four he really wanted that that early march uh court date and he's not going to get it but he's also not out of the hunt either um you know he does have the appellate court that appellate court's going to have a hearing in early january and when that appellate court had to rule before they had a ruling done in about 10 days so it might only be a couple of weeks after oral arguments that they can make their ruling if presidents are kings or not. But I think he's disappointed that the Supreme Court didn't take his recommendation more seriously to heart. What's that cross? Oh, okay. Remember we had that up here? The nightmare that this is this is stressing him out because he really wants this case to move forward. And he's putting a lot of effort in there. And a lot of work um, trying to dra drive this case forward. Again, the Mar-a-Lago documents case is important. Don't get me wrong. But this is really the one that is uh, going to be critical to getting the information of, um, of Donald Trump out to the voters. And I think what he's stressed out is that if this thing gets delayed till after the elections, I don't think they could delay it that long, but that's probably what he's stressing out over. <clears throat> In the past, we got the Eight of Swords. Um, just Donald Trump tying up these cases in the courts and the appeals. And um, maybe they miscalculated uh, Donald Trump uh, proclaiming that presidents are kings and have absolute immunity. Um, or maybe they knew it was coming but they, uh, this card either means they knew it was coming and he tried to take steps to minimize it or maybe they hadn't fully planned on this one. I'd like to think that he, he's um, ahead of the game and he saw this one coming and he and probably knew that there was no way around this. He couldn't get out of this, out of this appeal to try and delay his case. Right now he's waiting for judgment. He's waiting on the appellate courts, and there's that concern that um, if it doesn't make it, to, if it the appellate court, I'm pretty sure he knows the appellate court's going to rule in his favor. Um, but the Supreme Court has to take it up next. And, you know, what happens if the Supreme Court does take it? And let's say they fast track it. How long is it going to be before the Supreme Court? You now we're talking, you know, six to eight weeks before the Supreme Court makes their decision. That seems like a, a fairly quick turnaround. So already, you know, you're looking at three months lost. There's no way he can have his, uh, his March uh, date at that point. The other thing to, that I, I never, ever consider is what if the Supreme Court decides to take this case but doesn't fast track it? You know, they don't make it on a expedited review. They, you know, put it in the normal agenda and they'll rule on it after the 2024 elections. That would seem incredibly reckless of the Supreme Court. 
mean, what's the point of having them if they're not going to rule on cases of of magnitude like this? Um, that's another possibility. I don't mean to cause alarm, but you now I kept seeing where the Supreme Court. Well, I guess that was more for the voters keeping Trump off the ballot. But what if they don't on the ballot case? They decide they're not going to expedite it. What if this one they don't expedite it? That's a concern too. That's probably causing him self stress. I don't think that's a big probability. That's probably a minor probability in the grand scheme of things. There is no way the Supreme Court rules that presidents are kings. There is absolutely no way that they can do that. I mean, the hypocrisy would be amazing. And trust me, this Supreme Court can be as hypocritical uh, with the best of them. But then fine, Biden's king. <laughs> D disband the Supreme Court. Don't need your butts anymore. <laughs> I'm going to install Hunter Biden as, uh, the, as the president for life while I go, you know, take a golf vacation. I'm sure Marjorie Taylor Greene would like to be the VP, if you know what I mean. Uh Anyways, where, where was I? I've got I've been sidetracked here. Um, we're looking at the uh, January sixth case. Yeah, okay. Waiting for the appellate court and the Supreme Court to make their judgments. Ah, that card came up too. The agreements, the deals being made. You know, um, how's he feeling the January sixth case? I think he's doing pretty well, honestly. Um, he and Judge Chutkin seem to see eye to eye on things. Uh, Trump, again, is trying to delay things. I think the he understands the appellate court. Everything is going his way as far as how this case is going to be prosecuted. It's just the timeline that's causing him stress and disappointment. So what's he going to do? He's going <laughs> to... He's going to have a hillbilly brawl on the Supreme Court steps. He is... Jack Smith is you're going to hear a lot about him in his office and their actions of him in his office. He is going to keep the pressure up on Judge Cannon, on Judge Chutkin, on the appellate court, on the Supreme Court. He is going to he's going to be the left wing chaos agent that, you know, Trump likes to be the chaos agent. But now he doesn't get to control it. Jack Smith gets to control the energy and the um, the vibrancy of this investigation. He is going to push, 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 push. And he's going to push hard. Out comes the start. He's going to get what he wants. He will get what he wants. There might be a delay. You know, they'll get all the water in the pool. You might have some on the outside here. But he is going to get what he wants. And it's going to work out. Uh, why the delay? Why does there have to be a delay on this one? I don't know. And again, that's one of those spiritual things. Maybe we haven't learned our lesson yet, so we need to have Donald Trump as the Republican nominee for uh, the for the Republicans in 2024 to ensure voters get out and vote. Otherwise, maybe they wouldn't have done it. We only get to look through a porthole. <laughs> we don't get to see the big picture and all the moving parts. It would be so much nicer if we didn't have to go through this. Just saying. Grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> I've really enjoyed my time up in Mendocino. God, I needed this trip. Uh, just recharging, relaxing. And filling up this, you know, um, pop, folks talk about Sedona and the energy vortexes there and that stuff. For whatever reason, Mendocino does that same thing for me in my little happy place. By the, by the way, the place we're staying at is called Jade's Tower. You can find it on VRBO. The uh, the background here is a refurbished water tower. There's a water tower on this property. There's a house on the property. One of the first pictures I posted showed the house and. Uh, uh, the care the folks that caretake for the uh, the tower live in that house. They're not the owners. Um, the original owner, a woman named Jade, uh, had the the water tower refurbished, and this became her little her little spiritual retreat area. And I first came here in two thousand and sixteen in April, uh, going through a divorce, and just wanted to um, recharge. And so I picked Mendocino to go to, and. I thought this place looked really cool and funky, so I grabbed it and 
it's it's amazing and been here half a dozen times since try and get up at least once a year if i can all right so more information than you wanted though all right um let's see so we've asked how jack smith is doing with uh judge cannon with um how the, if that case is going to pan out we've got the appeal oh let's ask will the supreme court hear this case will the supreme court expedite hearing of this case <sighs> working this was under this was on jack's card too right this was the the energy uh, underneath was the working on it queen of swords there's that disappointment again Ace of Cups, good lord, and the Devil card. Who are they working for, huh? Are they working for Trump? Are they working for the American people. Um, he wants them to hear this case, and there's some real disappointment here. Um, it's almost like I they can't. I mean, they can't put this out till like August. They just can't. We're got the eight over here um there's just it's like there's a delay uh you got the queen of swords and the ace of cups on on the, it's a decision needs to be made absolutely a decision needs to be made it's a very emotionally charged case but this one should be so easy this should be such an easy case why are we getting disappointments I mean, maybe they do when they should have they should have skipped it to speed things up but um so there's been some speculation that the supreme court's not going to hear it they're just going to uh rely on um on the other on the uh the appellate court and they're not going to take it i don't think that's the case i think this this point might just be like you know We've done all this work, and the Supreme Court said, yeah, we have to weigh in on this one. We can't just rely on the appellate court's thing. Um, I just, it just, I think what the problem is, is it just delays things. It just delays things. Um, my worst fear on this one, again, is that it's not expedited. And I thought, well, you know, he did ask them to expedite it, and they did put a bunch of questionnaires out there, so they did listen to that. So I think that if they did listen to it, it would be expedited. But ultimately what it is, it's just going to delay things more. It's going to delay things probably a couple of months. Okay. We'll throw in that more as we get through the appellate court case here. Um lastly as we get into a long video here lastly let's take a look at um will jack smith be offered the attorney general position in the united states you know folks are commenting in the comments about something like that you know uh will jack would he be offered that would he take it what would be the energy around jack smith being an attorney general is that something he wants Seven of Swords, sneaking around in the middle of the night, stealing things, removing things, taking things that aren't yours. This is not a yes card, by the way. <laughs> Crossed by a disappointment. Um, <laughs> it's almost like they, they tease that they're going to offer it to him, and then they pull it. The lover's card underneath it. Um, if, you know, it would be like, you know, they, they talk about if they, if they appointed him, they would take it away from him too. Uh, maybe he just doesn't think that that's not it. I don't think maybe that's his jam. Maybe, you know, where he's very good at what he does, maybe he would be a, a disappointment as the uh, as an AG. Let's let's throw a little bit more on this and see if I can figure out what's going on here. And got the lover's card, the relationships, the underneath it. There's nothing about relationships. Maybe it would feel like a betrayal 
to um, Merrick Garland or somebody else if he were offered that position. Let's see. We got the, uh, the Ten of Cups, Nine of Swords. Boy, a lot of these cards have come up. I've seen before. Six of Swords, Ace of Pentacles. Would he be offered the AG? I think once upon a time, what this I think is saying is once upon a time, he would have packed up his stuff and taken the job. But after having done all the work recently with U.S. politics and such, I don't think he'd like it. I think that he would just be, he'd be frustrated with, with this. Um, you know, in the past, you know, he had this maybe ideal version of, you know, what America was and, you know, his best life and what he could do to, to do that, working his way up the ranks. But right now, it's just a nightmarish situation. <clears throat> we don't see much what's going on with Merrick Garland, but I bet you he does. And I bet you he looks at this job, which once upon a time would have been a dream job, as a freaking nightmare. And maybe after all the Trump cases and everything like that, he needs a break. He might actually take a break for a little bit on this one. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine he would write a book. <laughs> you know, maybe he would. It would be an interesting read. Uh, there, there could be more things he's pursuing. Um, there could be a big money offer that's coming his way. Something that... It's hard to believe that he would take money. You know what I mean? To take a high-paying job. It's not like he's going to join a law firm after all this. He's been a public servant for so long, he's probably going to continue to be a public servant. Maybe it's just he needs to take a break for his own health. That's probably more to the point, is that he, this is going to be uh, draining on him and his health, and he needs to take care of his health. He's been. It might be neglecting himself in his family, and after these cases are done, he might just take a break, a sabbatical, if you will, to recharge his batteries. I'm going to go that way. I don't think that's wealth. I think that's health. Um, would he offer the AG job? I don't think he'd take it. He Would he be good at it? Potentially. But I think all the politics and everything like that that's going on with that position right now, that's not what he's all about. He's about getting stuff done. He doesn't want to be, you think about it. He doesn't deal with the press. He, um, he won't answer questions. He keeps everything uh, tight, which is great for an AG, but there's going to be a lot of diplomacy that's, uh, that's going to be involved with that job. And maybe at this time, he just doesn't want to deal with it. He likes doing what he's doing. He likes being the tip of the spear as it were, and driving these cases home and, and bringing the bad guys in and making sure he gets prosecutions. And, um, the AG might be more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, administrative role, as it were, as opposed to getting your 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 hands dirty type of thing. So well, we'll see what happens. Anyways, long video. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn you loose now. Thank you uh, for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you for all your kind words and your comments and shares and everything you do to feed the algorithm. Some video makes it out to a wider audience. To new viewers, folks just discovering this channel recently or for the first time, welcome to the channel. Hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.